to the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord in this place. Thank you for joining us. This is Biblical Steps to Overcome Bad Habits from Hero Smarts Ministries and this is going to be the August 2024 session of it. My name is Lana Lude from Hero Smarts Ministries. Let's get started with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to your presence right now by the blood of Jesus asking you for mercy, mercy to be faithful, to do all things all right today. And as we come right now, Father, we receive your mercy and we are asking you, Father, for insight. Your word says you will know the truth and the truth is going to set you free. Father, that's what we want in this session today. Open our eyes to see the truth that will set us free. Give us the grace to be obedient to the truth that's going to set us free. And I pray this blessing over everybody who's going to be coming in contact with this resource in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Thank you all for coming in. Biblical steps to overcome is what we are going to be talking about today by the grace of God. And our main scripture, of course, is going to be Romans 8 from verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set us free from the law of sin and death. By the grace of God, this is your scripture. This is my scripture. There is no condemnation for you. There is no condemnation for me. Hallelujah by the grace of God. And lots of people may be watching this for the very first time. Maybe they have some kind of a bad habit in their lives. They have situations going on. Well, guess what? There is no condemnation for you because you are in Christ Jesus. So today we are going to be talking about a few things. We're going to be talking about what bad habits are and using the term bad habits interchangeably with negative addictions. So understanding those two terms interchangeably when we start talking about them will be really important. Why we need to come out of those kind of things or steer far away from those kind of things. Lots of us in this family of faith, by the grace of God, we are not addicted anymore. But we are getting farther and farther and farther away from it. Uh, not by power, not by might, but through the agency of certain wisdom strategies that we are going to be talking about in this session today. And we're going to be talking about the reason people get addicted to it, addicted sometimes, the path to addictions and the path out of negative addictions. All right, so let's try to get started right now. What are addictions? Addictions may be defined as something as um, enslavement to bad habits may be defined as literally enslavement to bad habits. And that's the reason we have this graphic on the, on the screen right now. It depicts a picture of somebody who's trying to get free from something, uh, but they are being snapped back to, to that particular chain because they are shackled to it. And a dictionary talks similarly about the concept of addiction, addictions being the state of being compulsively committed to a bad habit. You know, there's just a, a commi commitment to it right now. And Romans chapter 6 and verse 16 talks about the same thing as well. It says, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey. Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. Well, that describes the concept of enslavement all over again. Either positive enslavement or negative enslavement. Well, that's what bad habits are. That's what addictions are, and God's going to help us to break free from it if you are struggling with a bad habit today, or at the best, just learn how to steer far away from anything like that. All right, so let's go on. Why should we come out of it or steer far away from it? Thousands of people die every year. Over six, $600 billion is wasted every year in treating bad habits or addiction problems. 56% of divorce cases are caused by bad habits. Bad habits steal people's peace, shatters aspirations and dreams, and the spirit of disobedience in the air causes it. And most importantly, it sends people to hell. So we don't want to play with it. I mean, there's something that's going to be broken in your life, either temporarily or eternally, if we hang out in the, te in the territory of bad habits and addictions. 
Uh, the Word of God says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, and those who practice magic arts and idolaters and all liars will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Well, that's the category of addictions and what bad habits will do to people. Uh, ultimately trying to move them in the direction of the second death over there, which we call the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 21 in verse 8. Now, we know that lots of people try to get free from the syndrome of bad habits. Um, they go through different kinds of treatments, you know, physiological treatment, treatments, and they take medications. Maybe something is wrong with my brain. I got to go ahead and take this medication. But unfortunately, those things do not solve the problem. They find themselves getting back into the yoke of bad habits or addictions. Well, the reason for that is because there is a spirit or a spiritual force behind your bad habit. So you can't overcome the bad habit by using natural strategies. You've got to engage in counteracting spiritual strategies because the realm of the spirit is much faster, much sm smarter, and they've got access, the realm of the spirit has access to information about you, your daddy, your granddaddy, your great great granddaddy, to the nth generation, and they know certain infirmities in your flesh. So they know what to trigger in your circumstances to make you vow, to make you move like a, a murderer, they, to make you behave unbelieving, to become an idolater. They understand those things to trigger in the physical body and the circumstances because they have access to vast amounts of data. <laughs> And in computer science, we're just trying to scratch the surface about artificial intelligence and machine learning right now. Uh, the realm of the spirit have been using machine learning for eons of years. That's how the devil knows what's going to get you agitated. Have you ever wondered how come certain circumstances just replay themselves over and over again? And you wonder who's, act who's actually pressing the buttons of the circumstances? It's evil spirits. They have access to all the data about you. But bless the name of the Lord, the Holy Spirit has access not only to the data about you, but he has access to the data about those demons and those evil spirits that are trying to enforce the condition of addiction in your life. And his data far outpaces the data of the adversary. So we win. Now, understanding that is very important to stay far from bad habits. And that's what Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 2 is trying to talk about. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live. When you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom in the air, the spirit who is at work in those who are disobedient. And you see over there, there's a spiritual force behind disobedience. There's a spiritual force behind addictions. And it rules in the air. That gives me a tip. What about if he doesn't rule in my air anymore? Mm. Don't let the devil rule in your hair. You rule your air. <laughs> Against the adversary. Somebody type that in for me by the grace of God. Do not let the devil rule your air. Rather, you rule your air on your knees. Hallelujah. Because when you control the air, then there is no disobedience in your story anymore. Glory to God. Somebody type that in. When you control your spiritual air, there is no disobedience in your story anymore. That's correct. And we're going to be delving into some of the strategies in this session today to rule your air to control your air, to dislodge the influence of the spirit of disobedience away from your spiritual atmosphere, and you're going to see that you're going to be far and far and far away from anything remotely close to bad habits. But that's the reason we got to come out of it. We don't want to play with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why do people get addicted? Entertainment. The big word, entertainment. Um, it's roller coaster, it's sports, it's the movies, it's hanging out in clubs and all of that, just trying to escape the misery on the inside. It's a cop out. 
sports, entertainment will not give you that escape from the misery on the inside. Oh, somebody type that in for me. Glory to God. Sports and entertainment will not give you the, es the escape out of the mis misery on the inside. What solves the misery on the inside is to get into the presence of the Father where is the fullness, where the fullness of joy is located. But people don't know, people don't know taught that. They don't know that deeply. So they try to resort to this cop out, which is entertainment every time. And when they do that, they get further weakened, deprived of spiritual energy, and the devil jumps in there with temptation thoughts, and they fall flat for it. They don't know how to resist it, and they are back in addictions again. 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 says, But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People are going to be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiven, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. So it is an illusion. Entertainment is an illusion <laughs> to get free from the misery on the inside. Well, you can type it in like that as well for me. So when people are not taught, they think entertainment is the way I'm going to get away from the misery on the inside. But you will still remain miserable after the entertainment. It's just a momentary ecstasy that's going to plunge you down further in the direction of the second death. So it's no way to live. But that's the reason people get addicted. And for us to come out of addiction, to stay far away from it, you got to understand that entertainment is an illusion. Oh, praise the name of Allah. Somebody type that in for me. To stay far from addictions, to steer far and free away from bad habits, understand that entertainment is is an illusion it projects that it's going to give you an escape from the misery on the inside from the dryness on the inside it's going to get you ecstatic but it's going to deprive you of the fullness of joy and the fullness of strength you require in your story to overcome the pressure of the adversary so understand fundamentally you want to steer far away from bad habits understand that entertainment is an illusion glory to god <laughs> oh god's working with us right now now we're going to understand the path to addictions the path out of addictions right from this graphic and from this scripture titus chapter 3 verse 3 at one time you two were foolish disobedient deceived and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures well that lets us know that enslavement did not occur overnight there must have been a path that people traveled on to get there. And thankfully, there's a path to travel on to get out of there. The path to enslavement is foolishness, disobedience, deception, and enslavement. Well, we call that FDDA based on this chart that I'm showing on the screen. Lots of you that have you know, watched this presentation numerous times, you understand what I'm talking about. But some people may be... Some people may be stumbling on this presentation for the very first time, so to understand this graphic, you've got to understand there is a path that goes down like this. It goes into addictions, foolishness, disobedience, deception, and addiction, which is going to be another word for enslavement as talked about in Titus chapter 3, verse 3. But praise the name of the Lord, there's a way out of it. And the way out of it is going to be the RTOW strategy, which we call the RTO strategy. And we are going to see what RTOW stands for in a greater detail in subsequent slides. But it means repentance and truth and obedience and wisdom. And if you apply these strategies methodically, it will be a lot better than physiological treatments. Because this one will get you in the platform and under the influence of positive spiritual energy which will break the yoke of any addiction. It is guaranteed because it comes out from the pages of the Bible. Hallelujah. So let's delve deeper into it right now. Well, what is the path to addictions? The way in is called the FDDA. It's foolishness. It's disobedience. It's deception. It's addiction. What is foolishness? 
Foolishness is not necessarily sins. It's not necessarily addictions just yet. It just means a life of no structure. In other words, don't put me in some kind of a schedule. Don't tell me what to do and when to do it. I just want to leave everything and just, you know, do it the way I want to do it based on the whims and the caprices of my circumstances. Well, that particular person talking like that, you see somebody talking like that to you, just realize that they are going to be danger on steroids. <laughs> you want to do whatever comes to your mind, whatever you feel like doing, when you feel like doing it, man, you're an accident waiting to happen down the road. A life of no structure is accident waiting to happen down the road. Somebody type that in for me. Even in the realm of the natural, isn't that the way it works? When you're driving on a road, they have structure around the road you're driving in. They have the speed limit structure. They have demarcations. They have signs. They have stoplights and stop signs. They got numerous systems to help you stay safe while you're driving on that road. But if those structures are not there, or maybe the structure got torn down by a tornado or something like that, there is going to be chaos on the road. And that typically happens, you know, sometimes when the uh, high storms blow, up, blow across the community and all of a sudden the, the, the speed lights don't work anymore or the stop signs don't work anymore. And all of a sudden everybody gets to an intersection and people don't know what to do. Well, do I go across the intersection right now? Is it my time to go across the intersection? Oh, I got to that intersection before this guy. Well, this guy got, got there two, two minutes after me. Well, there's chaos right now because the structure has been torn down. But in the same, same way, a person who's living a life of no structure is chaos on steroids. Accident waiting to happen down the road, and that is foolishness. Well, that's the path that lots of people travel down every day. It's just a life of chaos and no structure. I just do whatever my body wants to do, do whatever I feel like doing. And of course, slowly but surely, they're going to be in treason. They're going to be uh, committing detestable practices at a thought level, and it's called sin. It's disobedience against, against God's orders. And together with that disobedience will be deceptions, which are going to be strongholds of lies in their minds right now, trying to reinforce the condition of disobedience. And when they don't do something about it, they become habitually addicted. And that's called treason. That's called addictions. That's how it starts. It starts with foolishness. Oh, what's the meaning of foolishness? Well, let's get deeper into it after the slide. The Bible way out is R-T-O-W. R stands for repentance, which is making a U-turn. And then the truth of the word, overcoming deception and obedience. And then wisdom strategies or discipleship strategies. Well, let's get down to the foolishness component of the FDDA right now. Foolishness. Thinking like a child every time. Not in the innocence of a child, but in the folly of a child. And as far as children are concerned, they want to play in the dirt all day long. You know, nothing stops them from doing that from dusk to dawn. Well, that's foolishness. No structure. No time to eat. No time to do your school lessons. No time to sleep. No time to clean your clothes. All day long, just playing in the dirt. Well, that's foolishness of a child. And somebody type that in for me. It's about time to grow up. Put structure and guardrails in your life, saying to God, so you can be can be far from addictions of the enemy. Well, that's what foolishness is. But when people don't do something of foolishness, then disobedience is going to be the natural thing after it. And we've all done it before. Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all journeyed past foolishness into disobedience at one time or another. But it is time right now, saying to God, to grow up. But when people don't do something with disobedience, guess what ha Guess what's, what happens? Deception. Why? Because of Hebrews 3.13. It says, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened 
by sin's deceitfulness. So sin doesn't just stop at sin. It has associated with it deception or deceitfulness. And now that deception and deceitfulness will be a configuration of your thought processes that try to uh, reinforce the condition of treason in your future. We talked about that numerous times. I think it's worth writing that down again, so please type it in for me. Deception is a reconfiguration of my thought processes or the way of thinking. That's what I call thought processes. It's a reconfiguration of one's way of thinking that tries to reinforce the condition of addictions in the future. And if somebody can, can capture all that, all those words, it's going to be very important to understand how deception works. Deception is not necessarily, it is fundamentally, it's a lack of information, but you know, that's how much the realm of the natural understands about deception. But deception goes deeper than that. <laughs> and there is a depth to deception. Somebody type that in. There is a depth to deception. Now, the depth of deception is it's trying to accomplish something in your future. You got to understand that. It's not just trying to deprive you of certain nuggets or certain pieces of information. Well, that is going to be true. But you need to understand that behind that deprivation, behind denial of information, deception has an objective of reinforcing the condition of addiction in the future. Yeah, that's the depth of deception. That's why it's dangerous. It's not just lack of information. It's trying to do something to your future. <laughs> The Bible calls it hardness in the scripture. It hardens the heart. It makes it makes it really difficult for people to change, for people to hear God properly. That is the depth of deception. Wow. Well, that's going to let you know what truth's going to do for you when we get over there. But well, that's milestone number three. And then milestone number four is going to be addictions right now because they have deceptions that will be reinforcing the condition of addictions in the future. And it becomes a whirlpool experience right now. But it's not a fun whirlpool anymore. It is a whirlpool of treason. It's going to be treason today, treason tomorrow. There is no peace which passes understand as a consequence of that. I'm scared like a chicken. Because the wicked man is going to flee when nobody's chasing him around. Why? Because there's treason in the heart. And that's what Titus chapter 3 verse 3 is talking about. That is the path to addiction. And there is no amount of medical therapy or social work effort that's going to get people free from it. They're just going to jump from one pillar to another post. They're going to jump from one fire to another fire. They get addicted to something else. If you do not understand the spiritual strategies to break this flow, they're going to be bound to addictions. And if they die in that mode, they're going to go to hell, unfortunately. But there is a way out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody type that in for me. There is a way out and put good news with three exclamation marks over there. Oh, wow. Brother Land, what you're talking about is really scary. I'm scared. No, it's not meant to get you scared. It's meant to get you motivated. There's a way out. The way out in here starts with repentance. You come to a point in your life that you're going to realize that this particular habit or this particular feeling is got to stop there is a way out enough is enough you tell your circumstances whatever you're dogging your heels for a number of years i don't care how long it is you got to come to a time and say well i'm not doing this anymore <laughs> and if you're listening to this presentation up until this particular sl slide i got good news for you this is where you are right now you want to make a u-turn that's the reason you can endure this teaching for this long because you are fed up. And that's a good thing. The Word of God says in Revelation chapter 2 verse 5, Consider how far you've fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. Talking about making a U-turn. How do we do that then? Well, 1 John 1 9 says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hebrews chapter 9 from verse 13 to 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ purge our conscience from dead works so that we can serve the living God? 
Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. Anybody who hides his sin or her sin will not prosper, but he who confesses and forsakes shall obtain mercy. Now, these are repentance pills. Somebody type that in for me. You should have the scriptures at your fingertips, like every moment of the day, you can bring it out of you because you don't need to spend more than 30 seconds in repentance. So repentance pills, please type it in. 1 John 1, 9, Hebrews 9, 13 to 14, Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 13. Memorize all the scriptures and let them come out of you real quickly if you need to repent of something. Hallelujah. But we can't afford to stop at the milestone of repentance. We've got to move on right now to another milestone called truth. Because remember a few moments ago we talked about the objective of deception, which is to reinforce the condition of addictions and truths in the future. And it is a reconfiguration of thought processes to do that. Well, if I repent right now and I don't do something to the deceptions in my heart, and subsequently the art, the hardness in my heart. Uh, I'm going to find myself falling to treason next week, and I'll have to come back and do repentance again. Why? Because I still have deceptions at the back of my heart, especially the will component of our thought processes is hardened by sins in the past. Well, what's going to do all of that? Truth. How do we know that? John, John chapter 8 and verse 32, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Hallelujah. That's why truth is important. Now, just like deception, there is a depth to truth as well. So you can appreciate truth in a deeper light going forward right now. So truth is not just the presence of information. It's not just my head full of numbers. You got to understand truth has an objective of setting you free it has an objective of defeating treason in your future he has an objective of keeping you free that's why you got to embrace the truth glory to god please type that in embrace the truth because you understand that truth has an objective of freedom in your future there is a depth to truth. The depth of truth is just trying to keep you free, set you free. And when you understand that, you're not just going to be looking at truth that, well, it's just another how-to series they're going to teach me. It's not just, well, a bunch of spiritual mathematics they're going to be talking about, right? You, you're going to appreciate the truth because the depth of truth is to set me free in my future. Hallelujah just directly antithetical to the objective of deception that we talked about a few moments ago. Truth has a plan to keep you free in the future. Embrace it. Hallelujah. Somebody type that in. Embrace the truth. It is a mental struggle that will keep you free and set you free. Embrace the truth. Hallelujah. Call truth your sister. Call truth your mother. I think the book of Proverbs says somewhere, it's called, called wisdom, your sister. Embrace it, because you know he holds the freedom of your future. Embrace truth. Oh, how do we do that then? Well, we're going to do that by identifying certain lies and conversely, through the help of the Holy Spirit, understand certain truths that are going to counter those lies. And with the truth of the Word of God, we are going to stay free. So we capture contemporary lies and deception nuggets that this generation is struggling with over here. The first lie is simply calling Jesus Lord will take one to heaven. That sounds like an old gospel truth over there and there's nothing beating this particular truth. Sounds like the truth, but it has a deception associated with it. And the deception over there is going to be the word simply over here. Why? Because calling Jesus Lord and leaving to please the Father is the way I'm going to go to heaven. You don't even need a lot of revelation to see that. If you read Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to verse 23, Luke chapter 6, from verse 46 to verse 48, and there are other numerous scriptures to talk in the context of this kind of things right now, but um, if people do not have access to the complete truth, which will count counter the tradition of lies in their hearts, 
there are going to be accidents waiting to happen down the road. So if I believe simply calling Jesus Lord will take me to heaven, well, what resistance is there in a face of temptation? The devil comes around and says, well, go ahead and do that bad habit. After all, it's at a thought level, you know. There's really nothing major about that. And if you feel bad about it, you quickly repent of it. Well, you are defenseless. You, you have no defenses right now because there's a lie over there in my heart. But if I believe that, oh, well, no, I'm not going to do that because i got to leave to please the Father before I can make it over to heaven or else I'm going to burn in hell forever. So the devil comes around and starts to tell me all these lies. Guess what I'm going to tell the devil? Get thee behind me, Satan. You have no place in my mind. The truth just set me free like that. Why? Because you know, you got to understand that truth is going to be equivalent to lie minus distortions. So we have a little mathematical equation in here. So lie is equivalent to truth plus distortion, just like we can see in this particular nugget over there. So this nugget, simply calling Jesus Lord, will take on to heaven, has a truth component to it, but at the same time, he has distortions to it. The distortion over here is simply. So when I eliminate distortion from a lie, I retrieve the truth. And that's what this exercise is trying to do for us. You know, the lie of the enemy is the one that says that tests and trials will last forever. So in your particular story, well, there's no, there's no point just trying to resist it. Well, it's going to last forever. You, you, this is the way you are. This is your personality. And I hear people believe that big lie of the enemy. No, any personality that's not consistent with the fruit of the Spirit is a lie. Don't take it. Reject it. Cast it out of you. Hallelujah. Some of the times that any personality analysis that is not consistent with the fruit of the Spirit is a lie. And they have different kinds of personality analysis right now <laughs> in the business community. They're going to say, well, the way your brain is wired is you're just an impatient person. You can't help it. That's the way your brain is wired because you are red over green. <laughs> they call them e collars They call them melancholic or sanguine or whatever. Don't believe that bogus lie of the enemy. No. Personality analysis. That is not consistent <laughs> with the fruit of the Spirit is a lie. Reject it. Because the fruit of the Spirit says that you are love, you are joy, you are patience, you are long-suffering, you are temperate. You have the fruit of the Spirit in you, and you can outlast any test and trial because you've got patience inside of you. Well, that's the truth of the Word of God. So don't let the analysis of the carnal paralyze your ability to please God. Hmm. Glory to God. Do not allow the analysis of the carnal to paralyze your ability to please God. Challenge the analysis. Eliminate the analysis with the truth from BSTO. Glory to God. Do not let the analysis of the carnal paralyze your ability to please God. Challenge the analysis. Eliminate the analysis with the truth of BSTO. And now the lie over here is yielding to the pressure is going to make it stop. Oh, but I've been trying to, brother, man, you don't understand the kind of pressure I'm going through. I try to resist the pressure, but it just won't stop. Oh, I can't do it. Anytime I yield to the pressure, I feel better, even though if, it, if it's going to be only five seconds. But at least I'm not going to lose my life. Now, that's the lie. The devil wants you to believe that when you yield to the pressure, you know, the pressure is going to leave and you're going to, you're not going to die. It's a lie. And you yield to that pressure, you're going to realize that next week the pressure is back on you. And if you're going to be honest with me, you're going to say, yes, sir, amen. You could give me an amen right over there. Why? Because that's the way Lucifer works. So he puts the pressure on you with the intention that you're going to budge and you're going to yield to the pressure because he's planning bigger pressure for your tomorrow. That's no way to leave. 
and then you yield to it tomorrow, the pressure becomes bigger the next day. You yield to it the next day, it becomes bigger next week. You yield to it next week, it becomes bigger next month. And before you know it, you've just been reduced to a wreck. A broken down, torn together, emotional wreck. That's how people are, literally, all over the world's atmosphere right now. That's the reason Yahushua can call them wretched. They've been defeated so many times by the adversary. They don't look like humans anymore. Oh, glory to God. Somebody type that in for me. When you keep yielding to the pressure of the adversary, the adversary is going to reduce you to a spiritual wreck. Who does not resemble the original design of a human mind anymore? Hmm. Glory to God. Somebody please capture these thoughts. They're just coming out of me. When you yield to the pressure of the adversary, many times, multiple times all through the years, you get reduced to a spiritual wreck. Whose mind does not resemble the original design of a human anymore? That's what's happening. All around the world atmosphere, world's atmosphere, you take a sneak peek into their minds, into their wheels, and you compare that with the original design, the Father's going to tell you, this is not the way I made these people. They're just completely spiritual wrecks right now. Why? Because they've been reduced over time through treason. Well, we're coming out by the grace of God. How do we come out? Oh, but I've yielded so many times. Well, there's a time to turn around. There's a time to start practicing the right thing. And the time is now. How do you do that? Resist and overcome the pressure. Oh, it looks like the pressure is going to kill me. Well, even though he were to kill me, I'm not going to deny my allegiance to him. If he kills me, God's going to raise me up. So, so believe that. And when you believe that God's going to raise you up from the dead, you know what? Well, the pressure is not going to kill you. No, addiction is not, uh, it's not a physiological problem. So why should addiction have a physiological ramification? No, no. Addiction is not a physiological problem. So he cannot result in physiological consequences. Now, addictions will always result in what they call psychological tendencies or psychological consequences, but not necessarily something to hurt the physical body. Now, as a consequence of that psychological tendency, you can do something to hurt the physical body, but fundamentally, addictions and bad habits are not physiological and they will not result in physiological tendencies. Rather, they will result in psychological, which we know is spiritual, they will result in psychological tendencies. So it is not possible for the pressure of addictions to kill the physical body. Impossible. Oh, but I see people that died, died because of drug overdose. No, 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 no. They did something physiological right now to hurt the physical body. But the addiction itself did not hurt the physical body. This is a clear delineation. This generation needs to understand that. The devil has run around, run rings around the, 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 the world circle so hard to just convolute concepts and confuse concepts and make people not think straight. No, it's about time right now. The man-child company needs to rise up and straighten up all these confusions. Addictions are not as a consequence of some kind of physiological disorders in your brain, in your cells, in your physical body. No, it is spiritual. And as a consequence of that, directly, it cannot result in physiological harms to the physical body. No, it is spiritual. Now, if you believe that, you're going to have the necessary impetus right now to resist pressure when it comes on you. And that's exactly what the Bible says over there. Submit to the Lord. Resist the devil and it's gonna flee away from you. Oh, but I try to resist the devil, it's not gonna flee away from me. Well, you, you get in contact with us in this ministry, we're, we're, gonna give you, we're gonna give you certain resources that will help you resist the devil. It's like a mosquito repellent, it's called incense. You put that incense of spiritual prayers literally all around your atmosphere, the enemy is gonna flee away from you, and that's the way to overcome pressure. Resistant overcoming pressure will make you stop. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 22. There is no peace for the wicked. Where's the peace then? It's in the kingdom of God. Righteousness, peace and joy. James 4, 7 that we talked about over there. 
Luke chapter 4 verse 13, Yahushua resisted all the temptations of the enemy and he returned in the strength of the anointing. Well, the same thing is going to happen to you. When you resist the pressure, you will return in the strength of the anointing. Hallelujah. Somebody type that in for me. When you resist the pressure, you will return in the strength of the anointing. Hallelujah. So that's the truth that will set me free. And all the lie over here is the blood of Jesus will completely undo the effect of a past misdeed. And that looks like an old gospel cliche again. But it is half correct because the blood of Jesus was designed to remove guilt from the human conscience. It was not designed to eliminate afflictions from my circumstances. So even though there's no guilt in my conscience anymore, there are going to be things that are broken down my circumstances until I do a repeat of the test, I pass the test, I download inheritances, and I start to generate incense based on those inheritances that have been downloaded before I can eliminate the trouble in my circumstances. That's the way it works. Why? Because we've seen we lost glory. Well, for us to get glory back, We've got to get rid of sin. Now, that truth of the Word of God is not going to make me play with treason. So, when an opportunity for offense shows up in my circumstances, I have the spiritual energy to say no to it right now because I don't want a more chaotic circumstance. <laughs> How many people want to have additional chaos in their circumstance in the 21st century? Uh, nobody wants that. So you type it in for me. If you do not want additional chaos in your circumstances, don't believe a lie. Hallelujah. Do not believe a lie if you do not want chaos amplified in my circumstances. I don't want chaos amplified. Rather, I want chaos diminished in my story. Hallelujah. Well, that's the, the reason for the truth. The truth is going to set us free by the grace of God. And what we have on the board right now is not necessarily exhaustive. Um, there may be additional lies that the devil may might have attached to your thought processes. And you don't even know the lies are there. But thankfully, the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you understand the lie that you believe and most importantly has access to the truth that will eliminate that lie so go to the holy spirit so this particular chart is not going to be complete if i do not tell you that because what i have on the board right now are just like sample nuggets but that there are additional nuggets that are going to be tailored to your story and i don't know it all but the holy spirit in you knows it all and to activate the holy spirit you've got to ask You've got to invite him. We call it praying for revelation knowledge in this ministry. So you come to the Holy Spirit, you say, Holy Spirit, please open my mind. My dumb mind to understand how come I am this stupid in myself. <laughs> you just get blunt with yourself under your breath in your mind talking to the Holy Spirit like that. I don't understand why I am just like a spiritual idiot right now. Well, be frank with yourself. You're not going to get offended with yourself. Call yourself a spiritual idiot so you can be wise. You know, whatever you got to do. And to your amazement, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, well, you believe a lie over here. Really? Yes. And this is the truth that's going to cancel that lie. We call the Holy Spirit a truth manufacturer. And since you're talking to yourself, guess what? Nobody has to know about it. But the good news is you enjoy the glory. You enjoy the blessing. You enjoy the freedom as a consequence of that spiritual exercise of honesty with the Holy Spirit in your closet. So this is important, please and please. The truth will set us free. Let's learn something from the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. All right. So this is another way to look at the lie and the truth contrast. But right now with the truth ammunition. I stand a good chance of being obedient right now when an opportunity for offense shows up in my story. How do I know that? Well, Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16 says, Let us then approach the throne of God's favor with faith so that we may, we may find or we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. The time of temptation is a time of need. The time of persecution is a time of need. 
The time of affliction is a time of need. What you need in those seasons, in those moments of your life, will be mercy and grace. Hallelujah. And the truth that you stored in your heart in prior times will be a manifestation of grace in your heart. Why? Because if the truth is stored in your heart and during the time of pressure, you've forgotten it. All the truth that we've been talking about right now, when your emotions are amplified, for some reason, they've just been knocked away from your brains. Well, the truth is not going to be of any use to you if you do not remember the truth in your time of pressure. Oh, glory to God. Somebody type the name. If I do not remember the truth in my time of pressure, the truth is of no use to me. Mm. Hallelujah. If I do not remember the truth in my time of pressure, the truth is of no use to me. So being able to remember the truth in my time of pressure is going to be really important. And thankfully, that's what the Holy Spirit, one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to bring all things into your remembrance. Did you see Jesus talking about that in the book of John? Correct. So by the way, to activate the remembrancer part of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, if I can use that word, is Hebrews 4.60. Ask for grace. When the pressure is on you, under your breath, say, God, please give me grace right now. And to your amazement, all that truth nugget that you've heard before in milestone number two, they're going to start flooding your mind right now, trying to recalibrate your thought processes. Well, don't you understand? Simply calling Jesus Lord is not what's going to take you to heaven. You've got to live to please the Father, call Jesus Lord, so you can take, so you can be on your way to heaven. Don't you understand that tests and trials will not last forever? you got patience in you. You can whip the storm. Don't you understand that yielding to the pressure will not result in permanent freedom? Resisting and overcoming pressure is the way to freedom. All those truth nuggets will start coming to you as a consequence of the ministry of the Holy Spirit when you acknowledge the Holy Spirit and you ask Him in your time of pressure. Hallelujah. That's what Hebrews 4, 4 and 6 is talking about. It's a manifestation of God's grace to remember the truth that I had in my heart in a time of pressure. That's how grace operates. It's going to give you that spiritual energy. And all of a sudden, you're going to say, well, I can beat this thing. I can whip it. I can cast it out. You're going to feel strong on the inside. And in addition to that, you need mercy. So mercy favor is going to work in your circumstances to make it difficult for you to sin. So grace is going to work in your heart to give you strength so that you can charge against the adversary. But mercy works in your circumstances. That's why both are important, both, both are favors. And when you ask God for mercy in your circumstances, you're going to see that, well, somebody just gave me a call or my potato is about to burn in the oven. I got to go ahead and check it up or something is going to happen over there. Well, something is going to happen in your circumstance that will take your mind away from that particular pressure. Well, that's called mercy. Hallelujah. And before you know it, you pass the test in obedience. Now, the more you do this and you obey the word, the better it is, the easier it gets, the easier it gets. And your members get trained right now for obedience. And that's the reason we have this graphic on the board talking about how to train a dog to be obedient. You're training your members to be obedient right now in this milestone. Hallelujah. And now we're not going to stop over here. We're going to go right now to the wisdom milestone. In the wisdom category, uh, you're not in addictions anymore, but you want to steer far away from it, which is where lots of us are in this ministry by the grace of God. How do we know that? Luke chapter 1 verse 7. It says, turn the disobedient. Luke chapter 1 verse 17. Turn the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make a people ready for the Lord. So did you see that wisdom and righteousness or being right with the Father are tightly coupled together? Wisdom and righteousness tightly coupled together. What's wisdom then? Well, we're not going to try to reinvent the wheel. We're going to go to the person who was tempted in every way just like as we are and yet without sin. His name is Yahushua. 
whom lots of people call Jesus. And he gives us an invitation to come learn from him. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29, it says, Come to me, all ye who are heavy laden and burdened. Come and learn of me. Take my discipline. Take my yoke upon you, and you will have rest for your souls. So he's given us an invitation to come learn from his ways right now. Oh, but how do I know the ways of Jesus? Well, you can study the scriptures to understand the discipline, the lifestyle of the master. But that's going to take you a long time. Because God's given you a resource in this generation through which you can learn the wisdom strategies of the master. It's called the HMODP. That's what we've been doing for the past 30-something years. Understanding what did the master do over here? How did the master do it? Documenting all of that. Practicing it. Making adjustments. Trying to, to, to fine-tune it. We call it Hero Smart Online Discipleship Program. It's full of wisdom strategies. And you connect, connect with this ministry, we're going to give you access to it. Well, how do I access the ODP then? Well, just go over here. YouTube.com slash Hero Smart. When you click on this youtube.com slash hero smart it's going to take you to a place right Jesus there. Christ came to set God's people Jesus free from Christ sin. came to set but God's people lots free of from God's sin but lots of God's people still struggle with sin and fall into scandals that mar the testimony of Jesus thereby making the task of reaching the world with the gospel message difficult unbelievers you click over here you're going to see the playlist and from the playlist, you're going to see something called Online Discipleship Program. You're going to see right here. I think it's right here. Yeah. 2024 ODP, 2023 ODP. We've been doing it for a number of years right now. You're going to see that playlist. And from the playlist, you just click on it. And then you start watching the message one after another. So if you were to click on the playlist over here, it's going to take you through... But there's so that's that there's a better way to access the ODP. <laughs> that's why we created this website. So you go to this website, HeroSmart.com, and then you do Church at HeroSmart. Then you click on Watch Sermons, and then you're gonna select the ODP you want to watch, which is 2024. Select week number one. Oh, let's see what's going on. Select week number one, and then you are gonna see the sermon in front of you. The sermon is gonna come right here. Uh, did you see the sermon over there? Well, so you can access the ODP from the website. And this is actually even um, a lot better because it gives you access to the study notes as well. So you can study along and watch the sermon along as well. And then you are going to see something called hashtag church at Hero Smart Nugget, which are going to be literally quick summaries of what the message is all about. So you have this resource in front of you um, to help you to be over here in the wisdom milestone and later on if you want to be a part of the session because we invite people to be a part of the session what you're going to do is to go to the website heroesmart.com and you're going to see register for the next BSTO so you put your details over here your email and you register we are going to be calling you to this monthly session which is a part of the wisdom strategies that got placed in the ODP to helping us to steer far away from bad habits and negative addictions by the grace of God. Hallelujah. So this is BSTO for the month of August 2024. I believe you got something out of it by the grace of God. We're going to have fellowship time right after, after this particular presentation. Uh, but right now, let's go ahead and close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to learn at your feet again, to understand the wisdom strategies, the truth, the spiritual strategies to overcome addictions and to steer far away from it. I'm asking you, Father, that you customize these instructions to everybody who's going to become in contact with this resource, oh, Father. Give them seeing eyes, give them hearing ears, give us understanding hearts, oh, Father, that we can steer away from the addictions and the bad habits and the glory blockers that are prevalent in this generation. I receive the blessing for this, these blessings for all of us in this ministry and for everybody who's, who's going to be coming in contact with this resource in the name of Yahushua. 
Amen. So praise the name of the Lord. Thank you for joining us today. Remember, God cares about you, and so do we. Yahushua is Lord. Stay blessed in the name of Yahushua.